we will now continue our discussion of grid-connected PV systems with batteries by looking more closely at DC-coupled systems. Let's start our discussion by drawing up a simple system. We'll start with batteries, which are the heart of any DC-coupled system. Small systems usually have battery packs with a voltage of 12, 24, or 48 volts. Larger systems may have higher battery voltages. The batteries will be at the base of our DC bus. To charge the batteries, we'll add a PV array and we'll also need a charge controller to make sure the array doesn't overcharge the batteries. Typically, the voltage of the batteries is used to determine their state of charge. We also need to add a use for the electricity in the system, and in this case, the load we add will be an inverter delivering power to AC loads. The inverter needs to include some mechanism for turning off the loads if the battery state of charge becomes too low. So far, this is a basic off-grid system like we saw previously. Power can flow from the PV array into the DC bus and from the DC bus out to the loads. Power can also flow in either direction between the DC bus and the batteries. Since we want a system connected to the electric power grid, we'll start by adding a very simple connection. In this design, the grid is connected only through a charger that converts AC power to DC power. Power in this case can only flow from the grid to the DC bus. The charger also needs to evaluate the battery voltage to determine when it should stop providing power to avoid overcharging the batteries. We could allow the PV array's charge controller and the charger from the grid to decide independently when to stop charging the batteries, based on the battery voltage. However, a better choice is for them to be coordinated by a system controller that communicates with each of them. This generally involves purchasing the charge controller, charger, and system controller from the same manufacturer so that they can use the same communications protocols. There are several disadvantages to the system drawn here. The first is that when the grid is present, we would like to be connected directly to our AC loads. As drawn, power going from the grid to the AC loads first has to be converted to DC by the charger and then converted back to AC by the inverter. There are losses in each step of the process. In this design, we've added a switch for the AC loads, so that they can operate directly off the grid. If power is available from the grid, the switch can be set so that the loads operate under grid power. Then, if there is grid outage, the switch can connect the loads to the inverter, which draws power from the batteries and the PV system. This switch might be automatic to switch quickly if grid power suddenly becomes unavailable or it might be manual. The problem is, if the loads are drawing power from the grid like this and the batteries are full, then there is no place for power from the PV array to go. Let's try another design. In this design, we have combined the charger and inverter on the right. Power can now flow from the grid to the DC bus as before while the grid can also be powering the loads. If grid power becomes unavailable, the system can disconnect from the grid and power can flow from the DC bus through the inverter and to the loads. This power may come from the batteries, from the PV array, or from both, depending on how much power the PV array can generate. It's best if we make the inverter a grid interactive inverter so that it can put out power while connected to the grid. In this case, even when grid power is available and the system is connected to it, power can flow from the PV array to the AC loads. If the loads need more power than the PV array can provide, additional power can come from the grid. If we have extra power from the PV array, we can supply the loads fully and feed the extra power back to the grid. Of course, we can still disconnect from the grid if necessary and power our loads from the PV array plus power from the batteries if we need it. As we see, there are many ways we might want to operate this system. If grid electricity is more expensive at some times than at others, we may want to schedule battery charging for when grid electricity is less expensive. Of course, we only want to do this if we are confident that grid power will be available when we want to charge so that we do not mind having our batteries at less than full charge. 
When grid electricity is the most valuable, we will want to sell as much power from the PV array to the grid as possible. We may even want to sell electricity from the batteries to the grid if the price is high enough. Then we would recharge the batteries from the PV array or from the grid when the price of grid electricity is lower. With all of these options, we would like a programmable system controller that can monitor and control the charge controller and the combined charger and inverter. It's best if the manufacturer built the components to work together. Several companies have sold products which combine a charge controller with a charger and inverter, and also include switches, a system controller with data links, and other components. Outback Power combined a charge controller, a charger and inverter, and a system controller that they sold separately into a product that they called the Smart RE. It is no longer made, but it included switches, fuses, sensors, and other components and placed them all in a weatherproof enclosure. It was available in 2.5 kilowatt and 3 kilowatt sizes. The individual components are still available. This picture of the inside shows clearly the charger and inverter component and the PV array charge controller component. The successor product to the Smart RE is called the Flex Power One and is shown here. It is similar to the previous product with a combined charger inverter and a PV charge controller that are also sold separately. However, this product does not have the weatherproof enclosure. It is available up to 3.6 kilowatts. Princeton Power makes larger products. The power ratings for their combined systems are 10 kilowatts and 100 kilowatts. One last point. In a typical home or other building, there are typically some loads that you want to continue to power during a grid outage and others that you can do without. For example, in a house, your critical loads might be your refrigerator, the fan to keep heat flowing from the heater, some lights, and an outlet to charge your cell phone when needed. These are things that you would want to power from an emergency power system during a grid outage. On the other hand, there are probably things you can do without during a power outage. These might include your TV and some less important lights. When you install a grid connected PV system with batteries, you typically want to separate these loads so that only the critical loads from the backup system are present. In this case, we will want to connect our non-critical loads separately to the grid as shown here. In practice, our system is likely to be configured like this. Power from the grid comes into the main electrical panel, to which the non-critical loads are attached. An output of the main electrical panel becomes the grid connection to the emergency electrical panel. The emergency power system, which in this case is a grid-connected PV system with batteries, is connected in between the main electrical panel and the emergency electrical panel. The critical loads are connected to the emergency electrical panel. When grid power is available and the batteries are full and the PV system is producing power, the PV system's power goes into the link between the main electrical panel and the emergency electrical panel. The power will replace power going from the grid to the critical loads. If the PV system is producing more power than the critical loads need, the remainder will flow to the non-critical loads or to the grid. If grid power is lost, the switch will open and the emergency power system will power the critical loads from the PV array and, if necessary, from the batteries.